Hey there, everybody. I'm so excited. It's the beginning of a new semester. And what I wanted to do is take just a few minutes to go over the learning management system with you so you can find everything and to also take some time to go over the syllabus and the class requirements so you know what to expect. Uh, so I have a pretty simple layout here. I like to keep things as simple as possible. And on the left side, you will see some sections like announcements, course content. And this is going to be the one where you spend the most of your time. There's a Proctor U block, and then there's some other stuff down here at the bottom. Uh, some of this stuff you probably won't see, but some of it you will. And that's because I'm logged in as an instructor, and I do have my role set to student so that it shows you mostly the same type of things that you would see. But there may be a few small differences. All right, so the first thing to really point out here is that this section, the announcements section, will have announcements throughout the semester. When I need to inform you of something, uh, or as the name would imply, make an announcement about something, this is where you'll see it. Now, typically, I try also to send the same message in an email inside the system. So you have it more than one way, but this is the area where you'll see the most up-to-date stuff. Now, after you've read an announcement, if you want to just move it out of the way, you can click on the little X and it will disappear. So that's just to help you out some. All right, in the course content, again, this is where you're going to spend most of your time. And since we're going to spend most of our time there today, I'm not going to go over it just yet because I want to point out a couple of other things. On the right side here, we have the calendar. And if you see the little arrow pointing to the side, you can click it, and it actually gives you um, a picture of the calendar. And you can click on each day, and it'll give you um, the events for the day. So here I can click on the down arrow, and it tells me that there's no events for today, and that's because there are no events for today. All right, this tells you in the update section everything that is available for you to work on. At the time, it's telling you that there are 16 quizzes not attempted, and that is showing because at this point, all the quizzes are in the system. I do have some minor adjustments that I need to make in terms of the dates that they're available and when they're due and all that. But at any rate, you will be seeing any updates, any new releases of, of uh, assignments or quizzes or discussions. Uh, that's where that will go. And then in your settings section, you should have your information here. And that's about all that I really want to point out there. Now across the top, you'll see the course homepage, which is actually where we are at the moment. And then if you click on content, it's going to expand the content area that was uh, right here in the middle of the screen. All right, then we can click on discussions, and this is going to show you all discussions that you'll have throughout the semester, and um, they will appear uh, at the appropriate time uh, with different information right here. Okay. And so what you will do, well, I'll come back to that too. I don't really want to get into that just yet. All right, all of your assignments are listed here. And you'll see that right now it's got some different dates. And that's because I need to make some adjustments. But this is where you will go to upload assignments or look at previous assignments. Then we have the quizzes tab. And this is where all the quizzes will be listed. You'll see you've got a midterm down here, which at this point is not yet accessible because it is password protected. It is the only proctored activity for the semester. So you must have a proctor you appointment in order to take this. Um, so don't worry about the fact that you don't have a password yet. You don't need it. All right, then uh, the class list will show you all of your classmates, I'm not going to go there just yet. Then I'm going to click on grades. And here this will show you all of the different assignments and their point values 
and as you accumulate grades, they'll actually fill in here. Now you'll notice here that in a couple of spaces, you see the word dropped. That does not mean you don't do that assignment. It simply means that that's the first item currently in that category, because at the end of the semester, I drop your lowest grade in each of these categories. So if you've taken the first 11 quizzes and your current lowest grade was on chapter seven, it'll move the dropped indicator to here instead of up here. So all assignments, all tests, all quizzes, uh, all discussions, they're all required, but the dropped indicator simply currently means that that's your lowest grade at the moment, but it will move around throughout the duration of the semester. This link tells you that there is free online tutoring, and I highly encourage you to take advantage of that if you need some additional help. And then under resources, you'll have some different things that are available as well. All right, like I said, you're going to spend most of your time in the content area. And just to reacquaint you, it's this section here. And you're going to start where it says start here. And I'm just going to click on the very first option. And it's going to open it up in the course info. This is my basic layout for every weekly module. You're going to have a title. You're going to have any appropriate subtitles. Most units do have some goals, some objectives, and some instructions. So the goals, these are like your overall goals for what you're going to learn in this particular week's module. The objectives are something that are a little more specific, and then the instructions are the most specific. These are the ones that basically tell you what it is that you're supposed to do for that module and what you're going to be graded on. You can use the arrows up here to move to the next section. And in this area, you'll see we have, it says course overview video. The video that I'm recording at the moment for you is the one you're actually going to be seeing here. So by the time you see this, you will actually see this video that I'm making right now. Here we have a little welcome from me. Um, as instructors, we're encouraged, especially if we're fully online, to introduce ourselves to you, as well as to tell you something about ourselves. And I like to share my teaching philosophy as well. So that's uh, information to introduce myself to you in a little more detail. Here is probably one of the two most important documents of the semester for the class, the other one being the course schedule, which I'll get to in a moment. But this is simply the master document for everything we're going to do this semester. And I do want to take a few minutes here to go over it with you. So you will see that this is CSCI 1250 and um, the, the semester and the CRN and section might vary a little based on your own specific one because I am recording one master video and that material will change based on what section you're in and what semester you're taking this. All right, here we have your general information about how to reach me. Um, the best ways are by phone and email. I do have virtual office hours, Monday and Tuesday from 11 to four. And during that time, I will be available. Uh, the absolute best way to get me is by text or phone call. I respond usually within just minutes to text messages, and I respond within usually just a couple of hours or so to a phone call. Emails usually take me about a day or so. So if you really need to get me right away, then the way to do it is by using text and phone. And if we need to set up a time to meet, we can actually meet here in Brightspace. We can meet on FaceTime, Skype, Zoom. Now is available to us as well. Um, and it would be during these times or other times by request. All right, your text and resources that, are, uh, that you need for the class. You will need whatever the current fluency with information technology book is 
Um, it is optional. I don't absolutely require that you purchase it, but I would prefer that you do because it's going to make your life easier. You will need to, um, e you can get the e-text version or the print copy version, but you would need one of those two and um, you can also rent it and you can even rent the e-text version. So I really prefer that you have it. Um, you can follow along with the notes uh, possibly, but it is going to be difficult. And when it gets to certain points in the video, the videos don't show all the details that you will need from the textbook. So while I do say that it's optional, it is highly, highly recommended. You will also need some supplemental materials such as the JavaScript documentation at mozilla.org, the W3Schools website, JavaScript, the Beginner's Guide is a great um, supplemental book to have on hand. Here we have the course description, which is actually the same course description that's available in Banner. So I'm not really going to go over it, but it tells you about what this course is, the credit hours, and so on. The content here, you'll see that we're going to be covering digital information, computer networks, introduction to HTML. You're actually going to write some HTML code and build a web page. You'll learn about CSS, which is cascading style sheets, which essentially makes web pages look pretty. I'm just summarizing uh, there. You'll have uh, an introduction to online information and searching, which is a vital skill these days. You'll learn about digital information, exactly what it is and how we digitize information. You'll learn about computer hardware, the different components, the physical pieces. One thing that I like to say in my classes is that, yes, I want you to learn the concepts and the skills that are necessary to make a good grade in the class, but that's not all I want you to walk away with. I want you to walk away with um, an increased knowledge as a consumer. When you go to the store, I want you to know what you're buying. I want you to know what's available. I want you to know what's a good deal, what's not a good deal. And learning computer hardware uh, is a great way to do that. You will learn about spreadsheets and formulas. Um, we'll specifically use Microsoft Excel, although there are other ones on the market. But Microsoft Excel really is considered to be uh, the flagship Excel, I mean, spreadsheet program. And if you have that skill under your belt, you will definitely be much more employable than without it. The algorithms week is going to be pretty interesting. Algorithms are at their core sets of instructions that tell computers what to do. And that's all I'm going to say right now because you'll learn much more later, but that's a fun week. And then principles of computer operations kind of goes hand in hand with the hardware. You have to know the pieces and how they work. And then we will get into some JavaScript programming and some other current topics and technology. Here are our course objectives, and I'm not really going to go over each one specifically, but these are very important. You see that under methods of instruction, this course will be conducted as a fully online course using e-learning. On the school website, you'll just simply click on my UNG and log in. And obviously, you're good with that because you're here. So you've already learned how to do that. <clears throat> here we have the evaluation methods and course grading. I group things into four categories for your grade, and each category is weighted. So what I do is I take all of the assignments in any given category, I average those together, and then multiply that average by the weight. <clears throat> so you'll see. The test category has two assignments, the midterm and then the final project. And the midterm is the proctored activity. That is not just my requirement, that is a university requirement, that we have a proctored activity. So ours will be the midterm. The lab projects component is worth 60% of your total grade. These are all the different assignments that we will do. The chapter quizzes section is going to be worth 10% of your total grade. That might seem like a low percentage for a lot of quizzes, but I want you to really focus more on the lab projects. The chapter quizzes are valuable, though, so that you're sure that you're actually 
understanding the concepts as you go. So this is very valuable. There will be one chapter quiz for every chapter unless specified. And then you will have uh, three attempts for each quiz and then the attempt with the highest grade will be the one that gets recorded in the grade book automatically. <clears throat> All right, then we have the discussions section of your grade. There will be four required discussions and for each required discussion, you first have to post your own answer. You won't be able to see classmates answers until you post your own. And then for each required discussion, you have to post a response to at least two classmates, but you can um, do more if you would like. Now, when I say required to post a response to two classmates, it can't be something like good to go or good topic or I like how you think. You actually need to have a well thought out response. You can relate to the classmate in some way, you know, like, hey, I think that too and here's why. You know, you have to have more substance to it. It can't be just a one or two word uh, answer. It has to be a legitimate, substantial response in order to get credit. All right, the course policies. Um, I do have a no-show policy, meaning that online students must log in to your e-learning course prior to the end of Ad Drop to confirm your attendance, and you have to complete that mandatory attendance quiz before you can get credit for being here. That's important because I need to know if you're actually planning on taking the class or not. If not, we need to get you dropped right away. Again, a little more about the proctored activity requirement. Um, I can't stress this enough. If you're gonna skip a, an assignment, this is not the one to skip. This one alone is 10% of your grade. For communication with me, I've sort of alluded to this already. But the best way uh, to contact me overall is by phone, using text or an actual phone call. But for assignment-specific communication or generic class-related communication, the use of the mail tool inside D2L is required. I prefer that you contact me here inside D2L rather than just at the school email because here uh, emails are actually uh, grouped with your class so I know when I open up your email exactly which class you're talking about. The course calendar is here and this is sort of just an overall course calendar. Um, it has some important dates throughout the semester but I have one down here as well as up here that's important and that is the withdrawal deadline without academic penalty. <clears throat> if you think that you're not going to be able to complete the class. You really want to um, make sure you have a good idea before October 9th. That's the last day you can drop in this semester. Now in a future semester um, where I might use the same video, the date will be different, but the concept is the same. You absolutely must pay attention to the withdrawal deadline, and if you need to drop, that's the last day you can drop without being penalized. And then here you have supplemental syllabus information. There is a clickable link here, which I'm not going to click at the moment, but it goes over all of these policies uh, that you can study on your own. Now, I'm, that's all of the syllabus. Again, I can't stress to you how important this is. So I, you know, if I were taking this class, I would print this out. I would make sure I had a copy of this. All right, now I'm going to hit the next arrow, and that takes us to the course schedule. Now, this is specifically the course schedule for the fall semester of this year, and if I do use the same video for the spring semester, the concepts will be the same. The weeks will be broken down by a number, and on your course schedule, you'll have the dates that correspond, and just to keep it simple, I use Monday through Friday. So week one, Monday through Friday, and all of the activities that are released for that week specifically. Now, this is the way things work regarding due dates. If I release something on Monday of week one, it is due by midnight on the Monday of week two. If I release something on week four on Monday, it is due by Monday on week five at midnight. 
So you have exactly one week and a day in order to get it done. So from Monday to Monday. And the reason I say a week and a day is that the assignments are released early and they're not due until the end of the day. So it's you get the whole full day in order to finish those. So you have from Monday to Monday midnight in order to turn in your assignments. I have in here on uh, in red on week seven in this case, uh, it may slightly change from semester to semester, but it is in red and it says sign up for midterm. That's because your midterm is a proctored activity. And since it is proctored, you have to sign up for an appointment with Proctor U. I put it on the week before the actual midterm because the earlier you sign up for your proctored activity appointment, the less expensive it is. Um, if you sign, you can actually take it on demand. Like if you, you know, make it to this week of the midterm and you want to take it on Wednesday at 1.43 p.m. because that's when you sat down on the computer, you can usually take it on demand, but it's going to cost you more than if you plan ahead at least three days prior to the time you want it. So if you know you want to take the exam at 2 p.m. on Thursday, you need to count back three days and make sure that you make your appointment at least three days prior in order to get the lowest uh, rate for that. All right. And so that is the course schedule. If I were taking this class, this is another document I would print out and keep for myself because this is crucially important. Uh, this is your, your signpost document for the entire semester. This tells you every single thing you will do. And you can literally take this thing and, you know, mark off each thing as you do it or check it off or, you know, whatever, however you happen to um, organize things for yourself. But I would definitely not want to miss this document. All right. Now I'm going to go back to the course home to kind of wrap this thing up and just simply say, I hope you all have a wonderful semester. I know this is an online course and sometimes you might feel uh, distanced from um, me as your instructor. I really want to do everything possible to make sure that I don't seem just like, you know, in The Wizard of Oz, the man behind the curtain, you know, the face behind the screen. I'm a real person. I'm really here for you. And I want you to reach out to me. Um, and, you know, as you do that, I'll get to know you more. You'll get to know me more. And I really just want this to be a great experience for you. All right. Well, that's all I have to say for this introduction video. So I'm going to let you folks go and have a wonderful day. And like I said, a great kickoff to the semester. Hope to see you or hear from you soon. Bye-bye.